Okay, gearing up this morning for what I anticipate to be an extremely hot scorcher of a day. I'm just plowing a bit of scrambled egg into myself and we're off. There's nothing more satisfying than coming into the unit and finding the control panel is up to temperature. After all, that's sweet news. What I'm also gonna do today is just kick on the glycol tank. I turned everything off, of course, while we weren't using it. And before I do that, cause it'll kick on the fan. Yesterday we received a package. One of the subbers has sent this. Thank you very much sir, that's going to go in line so we can use this exhaust pipe as we intended to previously but that's for another video, let's get a frickin' brewing! just seen me do is weigh out the DWB which is the calcites the chokes basically for the water treatment 389 grams for this particular beer 500 litres of the blonde so uh, that's gone into the grist which will mix evenly and then this is AMS which is uh, sulfites and acid basically uh, along with some other components I always forget what uh, but this is quite acidic and concentrated so what I've done the 260 millilitres that we've got in the jug I've diluted it with cold water and then what we'll do when the uh, liquor starts to show through the top of the grain bed which it is doing down here then we'll just uh, you know we'll splash it in we'll just splash it in at that point but until then we'll continue to let the transfer from the HLT into the boil kettle of the hot water carry on and nearly said continue twice we'll add the AMS we'll mix in take some temp readings and then we've got an hour of mashing time to sit and make a brew
So we've cleaned out the mash tun, transferred all the work of course, hit a boil, added some anti-film to prevent a boil over. Fill the bucket with water and overflowed it, that doesn't matter. Because what I'm going to do is chuck that bucket of water on the floor underneath the mash tun and boil kettle, rinse any sugars this way, and then when we're working, we're not sticking to the floor and pulling the paint up with little bits of residual sugar from the mash and from the transfer and exchanging the pipe work and what have you. And then what I'm going to do is hook up the uh, counter flow chiller which is going to have a real tough time in this weather today and uh, yeah get ready for uh, the first hop additions and the boil etc. No kidding, a little punk tries to throw me off a train, we get into a fight and he falls off. I'm asking why I did a thing like that, I tell him why. For three hours I tell him why. Don't believe me. complete or is it not quite so we've got three quarters of a tank left to transfer out of the boil kettle of course it's going to take so long from using that old counter flow chiller so until we get the five barrel um, what's it called plate chiller until we get the five barrel plate chiller in place and the water temperature drops a little bit because it's coming out the wall pretty damn hot then this is going to be an issue every day this week. So what I intend to do is leave this transferring. I wouldn't normally do this, but we're just going to leave this to transfer. I've already recovered enough water for tomorrow's brew day. That's sat in there. We've got some energy out of it. Unfortunately, because of the inefficiency of this chiller, I'm not able to recover all of that energy. So it's a bit of a pain in the bung, holio. But never mind, we're just gonna have to lump it until we're ready to get the plate chiller, which uh, I can't see it being any time soon, if I'm honest, 500 quid. So, I'll leave this, transferring. Gemma wanted to come into town, but I've taken the car this morning, so all I'm gonna do is run up there, pick her and the kids up, and bring them back down. Nothing extraordinary, if I'm honest. A little punk tries to throw me off a train, we get into a fight and he falls off. Cops ask me why I did a thing like that, I tell them why. For three hours I tell them why. They don't believe me. So we have yeast pitched. We've, we're slightly under on the gravity target by 0 0.005. I can live with that. I think that's, that's got the bite. So slight adjustment again this time 
with the IBUs, basically on the Whirlpool edition. Last time we whirlpooled at 80 degrees, which is generally the normal thing to do. And then, of course, uh, you add your hops at 80 degrees, and that will give you a certain amount of IBUs. Well, on this occasion, uh, I've just upped the whirlpool temperature to 90 degrees when I add them. Obviously, we continue to chill to 80, but that extra few minutes in there during the transfer knocks up the IBUs from 6 to, I think it was 13.1 for this particular batch, giving us a total across the board of 26 IBUs for the beer. So that should compensate, if not, on this batch, then the, after it's been drank, of course, then the next batch when we get the feedback, I will make an addition on the 60 minute, an increase on the 60 minute addition to compensate for the IBUs. But I think it's just a case of getting back into the flow of brewing the vacant off the cuff and uh, there was always a specific time when I added the hops and because I don't have all the records from IVB it's difficult to reflect back on how we ended up doing it at the end but I'm pretty sure that this is closer to my recipe uh, this time round. It started off as a flame out addition you see but then I remember backing it off because I didn't want to vaporise all the aromas. Anyway I'm going to clean this stuff up we're going to get in the car and we are finished brew day number one of this week. We'll see you tomorrow for brew day number two, maybe from a different perspective. Cheers.